السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ یا ربی لک الحمد کما یم بی جلال وجی کا وعظیم سلطانک اللہ ربنا لک الحمد بما خلقتنا و رزقتنا و حدیتنا و فرشت عنا اللہ لک الحمد بل اسلام ولک الحمد بل ایمان ولک الحمد بل قرآن اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقه قولی رب زدنا علما اللہم فقیحنا فی الدین اللہ حاصب نا حساب یسیرا اللہ انا نس آلو کا علم نافیا و عملا متقبلا و رسکن طیبا آمین یا رب العالمین ربی یسیر ولا تو اسیر و تمین دل خیر اللہ ثبت نا عند الموتی بلا الہ الا اللہ آمین یا رب العالمین So, we are going to continue on our Nahav textbook. And uh, last time, we were discussing that uh, sometimes we need a uh, ism to be light. So, there are going to be four reasons an ism to be light. Okay? Okay. Uh, uh, Not in this class, but uh, we discussed. Give me one minute. So there are going to be four reasons for any ism to be light. And what are they? One, we already know that when we are creating idafa fragment, then our mudaf has to be light. Right? Everyone is uh, clear on that? So, our mudaf needs to be light. And that is one reason for any ism to be light. That is one. Number two, when we call someone in Arabic, then the person we are calling to should be in lighter version. For example, we, in, uh, we say Zaydun, right? The default state of that ism should be Zaydun. But when I'm calling Zayd, I cannot say Ya Zaydun. Rather, I would say Ya Zaydu. So I need to make it light that is another reason and in the same uh, note we need to note that okay when we are calling like um, um idafa fragment for example when i say rasulullah rasulullah right rasul rasulullah Now, when I'm calling Ya Rasul, this is Idafa fragment. Rasulullah is Idafa fragment, right? When I put Ya before it, when I'm calling it, then what's going to happen? I cannot say Rasulu anymore. I need to say Rasulullah. So the person I'm calling to in Idafa fragment that should be nasab in status. So you are clear on these two difference, Ya Zaydu and Ya Rasulullah? I'm asking you guys. Alhamdulillah. Can you please explain the second one? So when we are calling to Idafa fragment, Rasulullah, It was actually Rasulullah, right? If it is not Ya over there, I can say Rasulullah. 
Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? But when I put ya before it, ya before any dafa fragment, then I cannot give it dhamma. Rather, it always need to take a fatha. Because when we are calling to someone in a dafa construction, then the person or the thing we are calling to will be nasab in status. Sister, that means mudaf will be nasab in status? Yeah, mudaf in nasab in status, yeah. Okay, okay, inshallah. Yeah, it's clear, inshallah. Okay, so that is uh, another note. So when we are, one thing is when our, uh, when we are creating a dafa fragment, our mudaf has to be light. For example, kitabullahi, I cannot say kitabun over there, right? One reason for any sum to be light. The second reason is when we are calling to some someone or something, right? So then that should be light. The person we or the thing we are calling to would be lighter version. Third one, absolute no. What is absolute no? La nafia to lil jins. This is another Arabic term for it. So, you know, that there are different kind of la in Arabic. We will, inshallah, know. And one we already know uh, in our second lesson, I believe. Uh, haza kitabun. What was the answer? You can say la haza kalamun. Right? So, this la is like a general no, uh, law. When we say no, it's not. Right? Then there is another la which is called la nahiya. What does nahiya mean? The Urdu speaker should know nahi. Nahi is when we forbear someone. Don't do that. Right? I'm talking to my uh, one of the kids and I'm saying don't go there. So I, I'm supposed to use this la nahiya over there. I'm forbidding from doing something. So this is a second kind of law. Then third kind of law could be like uh, in when we open Surah Bakira, you will see la raiba. La raiba. So now, what is the default state of raib? It should be raibun. Raibun. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why it is not raibun over here? Putting emphasis? Because of, law. Because of this law. Mm -hmm. And this law need, uh, whenever this law comes, there would be an isam after it, and that would be nasab and light. Two things. Isam. Nasab. Nasab and light. Light. So, and this is called absolute negation. What does that mean? Then one thing is, okay, a small kid asking me to give my cell phone. Right, and I'm gonna say no because he he gonna like uh, dial something or he gonna break it, right? So I'm afraid I'm gonna say no. But if that child is screaming and crying, right, and I'm Pupo of that uh, child, then you know Pupo is already very bad nam. So willingly or unwillingly i have to give this uh, phone to that child okay go ahead take it right so there was a room in that no the known that i said before now the same child that is my nephew or niece asking me to give a knife in the kitchen right 
So my no will be very strong. I'm going to say no. No, not, not at all. I'm not going to give you this knife. Right? So that is basically absolute negation when there is no room. So now, subhanallah, we say la ilaha. La. And then where is il ilaha? It's not ilahun. What is the default state? Ilahun. Ilahun. But it's not ilahun. It's yeah, ilaha. Because of, because of la, absolutely. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, no, not at all. There is no room for any ilah. Right? And yes. same idea in, uh, in uh, Surah Bakra, la raiba fihi. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying there is no room of any shak, any doubt in this book. Right? Mm -hmm. All the information, all the facts, all the speech in this Quran is absolute. Right? There is no room for any falsehood. That should be our mindset when it comes to Quran. So in the very beginning, in the very first ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you need to clear your mindset that you're going to read this Quran with this mindset that there is no falsehood in that book, subhanallah. Then you're going to move ahead. Otherwise, you know, when we have doubt, then things gonna not going to set in our head or mind or heart. So la raiba fihi or la ilaha even la waliba la kum even shaitan use that uh, la nahiya in Quran Pak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned la waliba la kum. So he was uh, encouraging uh, uh, in Ghazwa uh, Badr, right? He was with the kuffar. And saying that no one can overtake you. La waliba lakum. And then what happened? He saw angels coming to help the believers. So these kuffar cannot see the angels, but shaitan can, right? Iblis can see the angels. So right away he ran away. And when kuffar asked him, why you are running away? So his response was, I can I can see things which you cannot see, right? Subhanallah. And he himself said that I do promise and then my promises are false. And Allah do promise and he, his promises are uh, uh, like truthful. Right, so this la nafia to lil jeans we can see in Quran Park many places, and that is absolute negation. So what's gonna happen? There is going to be Allah, and after this la, there is going to be an ism. This ism would be light, and it will be mansub nasab in status. Clear? Sadati, I may have a question. Mm -hmm. When it is simple la, even then the fatha uh, rule has to be applied or no? No. With the simple then, then la, it could be any status. No yeah, it could be any st uh, status. Like we say uh, in our lesson, a haza kalamun, so answer could be la, haza kitabun. Okay. But to recognize this la nafia to lil jeans, we need to note that there is going to be ism after it, and that ism will be nasab and light. So no no uh, uh, light and no fatha with the regular la, and uh, with the negation, absolutely not is fatha, and it has to be light. Yeah. So the, the other la, uh, the regular la, is not going to make any changes. But this law is making changes. What changes it is making? Excuse me, Ustaza. 
that means that if we find an ism after Allah that is uh, light and that has a fatah on it, we can say that this is la nahir. Exactly, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And you will see some example in quran Park. So three uh, uh, like reasons we all we discussed so far. One is when we are having idafa fragment, so our mudaf is always light. So that's why we are learning how to make an ism light. Mm -hmm. The second reason is when we are calling to someone, right? The person or the thing we are calling to would be a light. Mm -hmm. And then we also saw that when we are calling to idafa fragment, then our mudaf will be nasab instead, just light and nasab. We cannot say ya Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that would be always Ya Rasulullah with Fatha. Then the third one is uh, absolute negation. La nafia to lil jins is the term for it. And the fourth one is partly flexible ism. They do not take the mean at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the example is Ibrahim. So Ibrahim we you will never find Ibrahim Moon, never ever. It will be the Rafa version would be Ibrahim Moon, and Nasa Benjar version would be Ibrahim. Ma. Both are with Fatha. That is partly flexible, and that is our topic for today, inshallah. inshallah. Okay, so moving on. So last time we were. Uh, we finished on this uh, drill, drill number four, right? Did we do that? Light, heavy, or irrelevant? Yes, we did it, right? Yes. Okay, so now flexibility. So flexibility is not one of the four properties of the ism. Is the flexibility property of an ism? No, no, no. Rather, it is a subtopic under status. Right? So yeah. remember, I told you in the beginning that, okay, kitabun or kitabu with one dhamma, in both ways, we're going to call it rafa. Mm -hmm. Why did I say that? Because some words are going to show different kinds of uh, flexibility. Some, as we uh, read that, some isms are partly flexible. They do not take the mean. So mm -hmm. they would be light. Right? So, or when we are making it muda for calling someone, right? All these four reasons. Still, if we, we see a dhamma, then it is rafa. Okay? So not only two dhammas is the indication of being rafa, rather one dhamma could be the rafa indication as well, right? So that is a subtopic under status. And this topic, just like light and heavy, deals with the different forms of the status markers can take. So look at the Muslim chart over here. So Muslimun, Musliman, Muslimin. The, and then a pair is Muslimani, 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 right? Muslimuna, Muslimina, Muslimina, Muslimatun, Muslimatin, and Muslimatin, right? Mm -hmm. And we learn how to make them light. Can someone remind me how we can make them light? How we are going to make singular light? By removing the noon. Yeah. No, no, we will have to remove the noon. So no. when we are saying that we need to make any some light, basically we are getting rid of the sound of noon. Noon sound. Yeah. Because Muslimun, if I write Muslimun, Muslimun. Right? Yeah. 
and I am getting rid of this noon sound. So what is left behind? Muslimu. Muslimu. That's why I am gonna say Muslimu. Right? There was the sound of heavy noon. Yeah, so we are just getting rid of noon. And same is Muslim man. Right? I'm going to get rid of this noon. And that makes Muslim man. Uh, uh, that makes Muslim man, sorry. Right? Because we, are, uh, we got rid of this uh, noon sound. Then Muslim min. Muslim min. We get rid of this noon and now I have mostly me. So that is how we are going to make any singular ism light by removing one harika basically. Then for pair, what we do, we just simply get rid of this noon. Right? All this noon gonna go. And in Muslimat, what going to happen? Same, since there is the mean, we're going to give one haraka. That is how we make any ism, their pairs, uh, or their uh, plurals, lighter version. Now, there are three forms of flexibility. There are how many forms of flexibility? Three. One fully flexible. And the Muslim chart is the example of it. Right? So we have all full version. Muslimun, Musliman, Muslimin, Muslimani, Muslimaini, Muslimaini, Muslim. Muna, Muslimina, Muslimina, Muslimatun, Muslimatan, Muslimatin. Right? So full version. That means the word Muslim is fully flexible. And what is the Arabic term? Moon Sarif or Morak. You should also remember these terms as well. Fully flexible means Moon Sarif, Morak. Then comes partly flexible. Partly flexible as the name is showing that part of them is flexible and part of them is not flexible, right? So, and that is called mamnu on minaswarf. Like mamnu means mana from surf. So they do not, they do not uh, uh, like uh, have all version like muslimun. And then the third category is non-flexible. Mabni. So non-flexible means they are not going to show any kind of flexibility. So then we are going to call them that they are Mabni. And uh, they are very easy. Example we should remember Musa. Right? Musa doesn't matter. It is playing the role of doer or detail or after of it's gonna look like Musa like that so that's why we're gonna say that this ism is basically Mabni another example is Allazi Allazi doesn't matter it is playing the role of a doer or a detail or after of still Allazi going to remain Allazi because it's Mabni. Make sense? Yes. And the example yes. could be like, you know, uh, we go to a party, some get together. You met a person, very new person to you. You just say Islam to that person. Right? And that person was so flexible, so friendly, that he told you the whole his life story in one go. 
right? That is example of someone being fully flexible. Then you go to another person, right? You greeted that person. And when you ask, like this person is not saying anything. And that could be the example of our teenagers today. Right? How was your day at school? Right? What did you eat? Uh, whose mic is on? The person's name is not there. It's an iPhone. You're up. I don't know. Yeah, okay, so now I can see. Okay, so that could be the example of our teenagers today, right? You you are trying to make a conversation with them, but nothing comes out. That is non-flexible. And then you met someone who is like in the middle, right? Little friendly, little moody. So that is that could be the example of partly flexible. So now we are going to see them in detail. So what is fully flexible? Fully flexible is the default state of a word. It is a broadest category. A fully flexible word is a word that can show all three status in a normal way according to what we learned in the Muslim chart, right? So Muslim chart is the example of any ism being fully flexible. Then non-flexible words are the opposite of fully flexible. They can never show their status. This means that they look the same in the rafa, nasab, and jar status. Words that end in alif maksura. Now, how we are going to recognize these non-flexible? So if you see a ism ending on alif maksura, which is like Musa, right? Or ending on alif like dunya, right? Musa, Dunya, and so these are the example of, uh, of an ism being non-flexible. Words like Huda, Musa, and Zakaria. So non-flexible. Then we are going to add to our list, what is the list? Ismul Ishara. Asmaul Ishara. What are Asmaul Ishara? Yes, all these pointers. Okay. So, Allazi, Allazani, Allazaini, Allazina, right? Or the feminine version is Allati, Allatani, Allataini, right? And then Allati or Allavai. So all these are small ishara. Then a small Mosula, we didn't talk about them, but uh, you will see in Quran a lot. Oh, sorry. A small isharas are Haza. Why we are saying Allati? <laughs> And then Haulai. Right? And then uh, what is the feminine version? Right? And mm -hmm. then that is uh, Ismul Ishara Lil Kareeb. And then the Baid one is Zalika and Tilka, right? Mm -hmm. 
So these are a small ishara and then a small mosula. It's written over here. Mm -hmm. Allah so Haza, Haza, Hazihi, and Haulai. So this is Ismul Ishara Lil Karib. And then Zalika, Tilka, and Ulaika, Ismul Ishara Lil Bai. And then we have a small Mosula, which is Allazi, Allazina, Allati is feminine, Allati, and then Ma and Man we need to add in it. Ma and Man is also. Asma'ul Mosula. <coughs> okay. We need to memorize that list, okay? Then, non-flexible ending all look the same and there is no uh, way to distinguish them uh, just by looking at them. So we need to look at the context and context is going to help us out that, okay, this uh, Islam is... Uh, either playing rafa role, nasab role, or jar role. For example, I say kharaja. What is kharaja mean? Left. He, he left. left. He left. And I say zaidun. Now what is the translation? Zaid left. Zaid left. But then I say kharaja Musa. Then Musa left. Musa left. Musa left, right? But Musa is not uh, showing me that this is Rafa in status. Because it's Mabni, so it's not showing status. Yeah, because exactly. Then, in the second example, if I say Ra'ai to Zaydan, Ra'ai to mean Aisa. Aisa who? Zaid. Zaid. But if I add Musa, then Musa gonna look like Musa as it was looking in my Rafa status, right? Yeah, that's so no, no change. So, but the context is gonna help me out. So I will look the words before it, after it, right? And then it is going to make sense to me. Okay, it is playing a role of Rafa, Nasa, Burja. Mm -hmm. Then I say, Bai to Zaydin. So, Baitu means house, and it is not Baitun, it is Baitu, it is light, no al, and then Zaydin is jar. So, what construction it is? And how I'm going to translate? The house of Zaid is beautiful. Yeah, so Baitu Zaydin, and now the news what is the news for about baitu zaidin that it is Jameel. Jameel. beautiful beautiful right so baitu zaidin is my muptada and jamilun is my khabar but if i say baitu musa <clears throat> right still it is musa yeah it's not musi or whatever <clears throat> so it's not going to show me any different status so that is the example of uh, non-flexible ending. Ostada, I have a question here. Yeah. <clears throat> ma and man. Ma, man is a plural and ma is singular. Yes. No, no. Ma is for gar akil. Right? Yes, and yes. Man, man is for akil and man include all uh, like uh, masculine and feminine both in it. And it could be singular, it could be plural. Okay, no, because it's uh, they wrote it under plural man, so I was kind of... yeah, it could be singular or plural. plural. So man could refer to both. Yeah. Okay. Ustada, salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Yeah. Ustada, did you uh, teach a uh, a small mosul before? No. no. I didn't. No, no I did we didn't do it. Yet. Yet. No. Okay. So you no. will do that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, inshallah. As okay. it comes to our, uh, in our lesson, we will do that. But right now, we are just memorizing that there are some asma that is called a small muscular, okay. right? And they are always going to be mabni. Okay, inshallah. Yes. Yeah, that much we need to uh, remember. And inshallah, rest uh, in our way. Okay, inshallah. Ma is always Gaira Kil, isn't it, sister? Yes. Yeah, I told you guys, Ma is for Gaira Kil. And man okay. is for Akil, 
and okay. man includes both singular and plural in it. Man. Yeah. And man is only singular? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. No because it is going to refer to the things. Uh -huh. Non-living yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. non-living mm -hmm. things, yeah. It could be plural, then. Eh? Yeah, yeah, it, it could, could be singular, singular plural. it could be plural, yeah. Okay. I think it, it, it can include both. Same okay. like one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, Mamnu Minas Surf mean partly flexible. That is going to be a big list. But the ism mostly are going to be fully flexible. Right? That default state is that they are going to be fully flexible uh, but there are partly flexible yes there are many in quran path but this list is not very long so partly flexible mamnu minas serve are words that can only display their status in two ways a partly flexible word can take a dhamma or a fatha Never kasra. So keep a note of it. Partly flexible, they do not like kasra. <clears throat> Partly flexible word can also never take the name. So two things you guys need to remember about partly flexible, that they do not like the mean and they do not like kasra. That's all about them. So you will see these uh, isams having no tanmeen and taking no kasra at all. The example is Yusufu, Yusufa, Yusufa. So when you see a uh, uh, fatha, you're going to think that this is nasab, right? But then you need to also think about it that... Uh, it could be partly flexible. So that is not going to take uh, kasra ever. And inshallah, don't worry about it that, okay, how I'm going to recognize that going to come automatically as we improve in our studies, as we improve in our vocabulary. Okay. Sure. So unlike a non-flexible word, there are times when partly flexible word can be made fully flexible. That is very interesting. So non-flexible word, they are never ever going to be flexible ever. Right? But there is way when we can make partly flexible into fully flexible. And how we can do that? In two ways by adding an al. So when I add al, then this word can be fully flexible. Now it will start taking kasra. With al, obviously it's not going to take the mean, right? Can an is yes. take yes. al and the mean? No. They can never come together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so no mean, but it's going to start taking kasra. And we will, uh, let me see if we have an example. Maybe I will uh, give an example as well. Mm. Or by making it a mudaf. So whenever our partly flexible is some is uh, being a mudaf, right? So then it will become fully flexible. I wish I should have put some example, but let me see if it is coming in the in our lesson. Okay, so there is no clear marker for partly flexible words. And uh, inshallah, we can we would be identify uh, would be able to identify them how 
by exposing to more vocabulary, as I said, okay? So, Sada, I have a question. Yeah. So, in this partly flexible word, when these two, under these two conditions, they become uh, flexible, uh, are the, are the hmm. proper names also included? Like, you know, I'm trying to think about uh, the use of example you gave. Hmm. You cannot uh, put all on Yusuf, can you? Uh, no, we cannot. But like, you know, like you said, uh, when they are mudaf. Okay, I'm going to show you, inshallah. So let exactly. me go to the list and uh, I will explain you with the example. So no worries. Inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Okay. Okay. So uh, non-Arab names. So very first list of words or ism that can be... Uh, Mamnoom in a surf or partly flexible one list is that non Arab names. So Arab names are fully flexible, but non Arab names will be partly flexible. That's why we see Ibrahimu, Ibrahima, Ibrahima, because Ibrahim is not uh, an Arab name. Okay. So now in Quran Park, you will see four prophets. Their names are Arabs. Shoaibun, Swalihun, Hudun, and Muhammad. So Muhammadun, fully flexible Arab name. Hudun, Swalihun, Shoaibun. And you will see Nuhun as well. Nuhun and Nuhan, it is used in Quran Pak. So it is taking the mean. We say partly flexible does not take the mean. Right? And we are saying non Arab names are not fully flexible, but this one is taking. So, what is the uh, reason behind it? When you see three, le three letters in any ism, so we have noon, wow, and ha. How many letters? Three. Three. <clears throat> and the middle one has spoon. Middle one has what? Spoon. Spoon. Then that word, that is some could be fully flexible. Fully flexible. Even though it's not Arab name. Oh, this is interesting, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to remember that. So three letters and the middle one has spoon, then it is fully flexible. And that is non-Arab name. And the list over here, we will see Yus Yusuf, Ismail, Ibrahim, Yaqub, Maryam. They are all non-Arab names. That's why we they, they are never Partly ever going to take the mean. Or and they are never ever going to take Kasra. So what are the three versions? Yusufu, Yusufa, and Yusufa. Ismailu, Ismaila, Ismaila. So the jar status is Ismaila. Okay? So yeah. this patha should not confuse you that this is Nasab. <clears throat> you should know this word is partly flexible and that's why its jar is with patha. Ibrahimu, Ibrahima, Ibrahima. Yaqubu, Yaquba, Yaquba. Maryamu, Maryama, and Maryama. And then examples of fully flexible. Muhammadun, Muhammadan, Muhammadin. Hudun, Hudan, and Hudin. Same like... Uh, Huda, I think this is Arab name, right? But still, you see that three root letters and middle one is having spoon. Swalihun, Swalihan, and Swalihan. Shuaibun, Shuaibun, and Shuaibin. Yeah. So fully flexible. Then there are exceptions. Now, this is the exception that we already uh, yes. talk yes. about. So there is one exception to this rule. Three 
letters name with the spoon on the middle letter are always fully flexible even though they are non arab names example is lutun lutun and lutwin right even though it's not arab name but since three root letters middle one is having spoon so it is going to be fully flexible make sense mm -hmm. yes yes interesting right very interesting yeah okay then so we are saying non arab names are partly flexible non arab names are partly partly flexible now we're going to come to so ustaz uh, both genders right non arab both, both genders yeah so yeah maryam and all yes yeah so okay. now we are coming mari uh, feminine names and uniquely masculine names now what does that mean uniquely masculine names right so basically we are saying that whenever uh, feminine names gonna end on tam or buta right sometimes mm -hmm. so feminine names and uniquely masculine names they are going to be partly flexible and examples are aisha tu so it could not be aisha tun ever 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 never right so aisha tu aisha ta and aisha ta khadija tu khadija ta and khadija ta zainabu zainaba zainaba imanu imana and imana okay so feminine names are going to be partly flexible no tanween no kasra and then we said uniquely masculine names now look at the these words over here hamza tu what do you notice at the end ta ta marbuta ta marbuta so yeah. when you see that scene we gonna count them as partly flexible hamza tu hamza ta hamza ta muawiya tu muawiya ta muawiya ta um umaru umara and umara usmanu usmana and usmana then comes the third list what are the two lists so far ustad ji the um, uh, the uniquely masculine names they also don't take uh, tanween and kasra both yeah 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 and the uh, the some names that are ending on alif nun like usman right so they they are also these set patterns basically the names of these set patterns they are not going to take uh, uh tanween and kasra so they are arab named right they are are they they are arab names right no they are no. they are not considered as as arab names i guess no okay. Which one? I said, are those are considered Arab names? Those that no. are partly flexible here, or no? Umaru. Uh, uh, all no, those they. Names. Non Arab no. names are partly flexible. No. So they are non Arabs. These are not Arab names. Only four prophets' name is Arab, Arab. names. Yeah. Yeah. In the Quran, no other. Okay. Yeah, so these are all all non Arabs. Okay. So so far two uh, categories on our list. What are they? Arab name and non Arab. No. Arab names. Non Arab. Non Arab. Sorry, non Arab names partly flexible. And what is what what was the second list? Feminine names fully flexible. Fully flexible. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. I'm talking oh, about partly flexible. What are the feminine? feminine so all feminine are partly feminine. flexible. All feminine names, yeah. are and feminine. then okay. uniquely masculine names are uh, also partly okay. flexible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So go in order. So repeat one more time. So what are I explain two categories that are going to be partly flexible. The first one is. non arab non arab non arab 
فاهمين تعملي اللي ايه؟ يعني يونيكلي حتى مثلا انتوا هتعملي يعني يونيكلي ماسكولين نيمز يونيكلي ماسكولين نيمز اوكي سو ذيز ار ذا ليست سو فار ناو كم تو ثرد كاتيجوري proper names of places what does that uh, mean proper names of places like america yeah exactly so proper names of places yeah all the con countries name yeah country names or, name, cities or, names. or the name yeah or yeah. the name of the person yeah No places. Places. We are no, talking. No, it's only places. places. Oh, okay. Okay, only places. Sorry, I didn't get to see okay. that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Makkah to Makkah ta Makkah ta. Yasribu, Yasriba, and Yasriba. Jahannamu, Jahannama, and Jahannama. So same rule apply. No tanwi, no kasra. Yeah. This is the common rule, but partly flexible. Yeah. Okay, now some names of places have an al. In such cases, the name is fully flexible because we say that whenever we are going to add al on uh, partly mm -hmm. flexible is some, it can be fully flexible then, right? So this is the example over here. So Iraq is a name of a place, right? Non-flexible. But when I add al to it, now it it will become fully flexible. Al Iraqu, al Iraqa, and al Iraqi. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And we cannot add al to the proper names, uh, like uh, yeah, the, to names the feminine person. or the uh, uh, the other names. We cannot add al. It's only uh, with the uh, yeah. countries or cities name. Yeah, it is, and not in every country and city. I think only we need to stick whatever Arab put all on them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are not going to create anything new over here. Okay. So Al Hindu, Al Hinda, and Al Hindi. So again, yeah, because our names are already Marifa. Yeah, we don't need exactly. Marifa. Yeah. Okay. So this is another example then. Name of places that are three root letters. Same rule we're gonna apply over here. Three root letters. Middle one has kun. Now this place is gonna be fully flexible. So Adnu, Adnu is a name of a place in Jannah, right? So Adnun, Adnan, and Adnim. So it is taking the mean. It is taking kasra. Why? Three root letters, middle one has spoon. And no as we see, as we see in the previous example uh, with the yeah. Arab, uh, prophet's name Nu, yeah, the same, yeah, yeah, same, same. Right. They are fully flexible coming under that group. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now there are certain word patterns that are partly flexible, and we. We'll look at this pattern in our study of surf. So that is our later part, inshallah. Uh, in your vocabulary, partly flexible words will be den denoted by having a single vowel ending, not a mean for now as you memorize in your vocabulary. Uh -huh. So that was our thing. And now we can uh, do this exercise. We need to find fully. Uh, partly or non-flexible and we have to give a reason as well so let's take the word muhammad so i i can say muhammadun muhammadan muhammadin right Definitely. so all three version and that is fully flexible right yes. but about Hussan? Partly mm -hmm. the same as uh, Musa, yeah, non flexible. Non flexible, it's non flexible. Non -flexible. Yes, it is non flexible. Okay, because Huda, uh, the Rafa, Nasab, and Jarvajan will be all the same. Next one, the proper, uh, proper name of place. So, 
so yeah. it's partly it could be partly collection yeah so it could be jahannamu or jahannama yeah never jahannami never yeah. ever okay mm -hmm. and no the name so this is partly flexible someone's mic e. is uh, on again who is that okay then we have makka makka to partly can i say name of the place no no makka to yes the yeah. same never makka to so makka to name of place kata kata makka ta but if i put al on it then it will be fully then flexible. it will be fully flexible then, then i can do. say al makkah tu al makkah ta and al makkah tu so this is partly flexible umar partly partly non arab name you know weekly non arab name very good you name. need to give a reason as well okay now talha uniquely masculine ustaz yeah very good so part of flexible and uniquely masculine name sole sole fully flexible fully name of prophet arab name arab name not name of a prophet because we know many other prophet their name is not fully flexible right so what is the right answer arab name no hun it's fully flexible why because of three letters and the sukun yeah the sukun in the middle letter three letter word yeah okay we need to take turns to speak because if everyone is speaking then no one can hear you guys right and recording will gonna be messed up so we can take turn talking next one adnun जन्ना टॉकिंग ओवर देर आई डों Okay, so that was all about flexibility. Can someone repeat how many different kinds of flexibility and how we are going to recognize them? Uh, I have a doubt. Yeah. Uh, Santa, I wanted to know that uh, for Jahannam, me, why you didn't say Jahannam, me? We say na sometimes Jahannam, me, or is it the no. Urdu? Word. Yeah, that is Urdu. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, okay, that is good. So, Subhan. Oh. And we basically, Jannati. We say Jannati. What does Jannati mean? What is Jannati like mean? My, And we are like saying this person Jannati. is Jannati. That one is going. That is going to heaven. To Jannat. So basically, we are saying Jannati Yun, like we say Canadian, right? Someone is Canadian, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So this Ya is called Ya of Misba, mm -hmm. right? Pakistani, I am Pakistani, right? So mm -hmm. uh, Pakistani Yun. If I am giving a Misba to myself, it will be Pakistani Yun. Right. From, so from it means yeah, from. Yeah, basically, so that is called ya of nisba. Ya of nisba. So nisba dena. Urdu me ham kate. Nash nationality. So, 
yeah nationality so when we are saying basically jahannami or jannati we are giving them nationality <laughs> oh, okay yeah so subhanallah we should not be doing that totally wrong okay so pronouns now and alhamdulillah we know all these pronouns right? so that would be inshallah quick or do you think, okay, I was asking you guys to explain what did we learn so far. So we, we, you guys can summarize. How many different kinds of flexibility we know? There are three, three forms of flexibility. What are they? Uh, fully flexible, partly flexible, and non-flexible. Okay, give me example of partly how you are going to, uh, fully sorry, how you are going to know that some ism is fully flexible. Yeah, when ism ends with alif uh, maksura or alif at the end. No, I'm saying fully flexible. Oh, fully flexible. Four, uh, four Arab names are fully flexible. Mm -hmm. So basically uh, when an ism is Arab taking can mean and kasra, right? So you should know this word is fully flexible. All the three, mm -hmm. yes, status of the okay. ism. Yeah. When an ism is taking tanmeen and it is taking kasra, right? You should know that this word is fully flexible. Oh. Because because okay, yeah. uh, partly flexible are not going to take that. Mm -hmm. Non-flexible are not going to take that, right? Non-flexible, mm -hmm. they don't have uh, any other version. Mm -hmm. okay. That should be your clue to know that this word mm -hmm. is fully flexible. Mm -hmm. Then mean or kasra. Okay. This is the definition of fully flexible. We'll say that when the ism takes the tanveen and kasra. Yeah. yeah. So okay. then this is some is basically fully flexible. Okay. And then you can remember these four names of prophets. So Arab names are fully flexible, right? And then yeah. you can remember Muhammad, Shu'aib, Saleh, and uh, Hud, right? So these are fully flexible. Okay, now someone else need to give me uh, non-flexible. How we are going to recognize non flexible? Ending with Alif Maksura and Malif Alif uh, Magduda, the names ending with those are not flexible. Mm -hmm. So like the Musa. word that ending on Alif or Alif Maksura, Maksura they yeah. are non flexible examples okay. are Musa, Huda, Isa. Oh. Yeah, okay. Good one. And then now partly flexible gonna be a long list, right? Yes. So someone can uh, repeat partly flexible, how we are going to recognize them, what are they? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, uh, basically any oh. ism can be partly flexible when it cannot take a than mean or a gastra, when it does not take a than mean or a gastra. They can show their status only by using a dhamma or a patha. So they cannot show their judge status. And uh, if uh, there are a list of uh, isms that we can say that they are partly flexible, first of mm -hmm. them is the non Arab names. The mm -hmm. second of them is the feminine names. The third mm -hmm. of them is the proper names of the uh, places. And uh, when we, the other thing is that when we add an ul to it, the part of flexible word can be changed into a fully flexible word. And the other exception is that when the when the sum is a three letter letter word mm -hmm. with a sakon on the center word, it mm -hmm. it can be. Fully flexible. Fully flexible. Okay. Yeah, okay, that is good one. Open so everyone is clear on that list? Yes, Alhamdulillah. 
should we stop over here okay yes i yes. guess or or yes, you stick the banner to move on no oh, it's okay stop for today it's, it's okay yeah okay. yeah we can okay. stop here we need to yeah, more work on it than uh one no. hour deal <laughs> Pronoun mm -hmm. is not that. Insha Alhamdulillah, we already know them. So let's mm -hmm. go quickly to the pronoun. So pronouns, mm -hmm. we know that there are going to be two different kinds of pronoun. Who remember what uh, two different kind of pronoun we know so far? Mutasilim. Huh? Mutasil and detached pronoun and detached pronouns. Exactly, right? Mutasil so and Munfasil. Munfasil, Muttasil, and yeah, okay. Muttasil is attached, and Munfasil is separated. De detached yeah. pronoun. So independent pronoun, and what is the Arabic term for that? Munfasil. Independent yeah. or Munfasil. With a fasla. That, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, by itself, so they are standing by themselves. Mm -hmm. They are independent. And the other category is mutasil and mutasil attached. means attached. So who will remember all these 14 pronouns? Can someone sing that song for me? The pronoun one? Sister, I can say that it is pronoun. Go ahead. Can I try? Tua huma hum, ya huma hunna, anta antuma antum, anti antuma antuna, ana nahnu. Good. And you know which one is which? Yeah. If yeah, I yeah. ask you, Nahnu? Nahnu, we. Antuna? Antuna for uh, feminine, plural. All. You all. Very good. And Hunna? Uh, hunna, they. Uh, for the feminine. They so, are... third person. Third so, person we need plural. to say person as well, right? Oh, yeah. Third person, yeah. plural. So, yeah. First person, second person, third person. What is third person? Third person is a uh, Arabic term I forgot. Sister. Yeah. 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 Second person. Hadir. Uh, the one in front of you. Yeah, the mean Hadir. The mean. And uh, uh, first person is Mutakalim. Mutakalim. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, that is good. And then attach pronoun. Did we do attach pronoun? Yes. Yes, yes. yes we did. Yeah, so these are basically who, whom, whom. Can someone say that for me? Shall I say? Yeah. Who, whom, whom, ha, whom, whom, ka, whom, whom, he, whom, whom, na, he, he, na. Very good. Very good. Okay. And what do we know about uh, independent pronoun? What is their uh, status? It is Nasa Benjamin. Nasa Benjamin. Independent, independent okay. is Rafa. Listen to oh, my question. Hmm. I say independent pronoun. What is their status? Independent. Rafa always Rafa. Always Rafa. Always Rafa. Always Rafa. Always Rafa. Okay. And what is the type of all, all these pronouns? Proper. 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 Doesn't matter they are munfasil or mutasil. They are yeah. always proper. Okay. So yeah. when it comes to type, they are, they are always proper. Yeah. That voice is so annoying. I don't know. Who is uh, that. It's What's very annoying. Point? Yes. This is Sister Rabia's voice. I, I have a uh, message in the yeah. that uh, some uh, Rabia sisters. Uh, mm -hmm. sister I message her too directly, yeah. but nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Continuously, somebody. Yeah. It is very really bothersome. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Okay, okay I muted her. Oh. Okay, so independent pronoun, always the fine status. They are always going to be muptada. And uh, our uh, uh, attached pronoun, 
what could be their status nasa banjar either nasa banjar yeah. and when they are nasa and when they are jar when they Based based on the detail and possession uh, it, yes. it respectively yes, yes. so when uh, is some plus attached pronoun is always idafa fragment mm -hmm. so yes. that means that is jar in status mm -hmm. so these attached pronoun gonna be jar what is the, what, what could be the example of it the kitab bachu ko kitabu muhammadin or ya kitabuhu kitabuhu ma kitabuhum right kitabi all these who huma hum right these are basically we are creating a dafa fragment and this who is jar in status why kitabuhu this who is idaf mudaf ilayhi and that's why it is jar in status mm -hmm. And when I say kitabi, my book, again, this ya is jar in status. Mm -hmm. But if I say nasa rani, okay, I add nasa ra over here. But that nasa is failed. Yeah. Now, what is, what is the status of this knee now? Nasa. 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 Uh, nasa Exactly. So now he helped me. Me. Right? But when I add yeah, Rabbu over here, Rabbu so who? Rabbu who, who? Now this yes. who is Mudafilehi, which yes. is Jar. Mm -hmm. So always remember attached pronoun with an ism. Always creating a dafa fragment, attached pronoun with the fail, always mafool on behi. So that, that was all about our pronouns. And now we are done our status with that. So what is the summary of the status? Summary of the status is that uh, what is status first of all? When I say, uh, tell me the status, three things should come into your mind. That this ism is either rafa, nasab, or jar. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's just the uh, camera is on. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Probably new students. Okay, then... Ending sound, how we are going to know the status of any ism. If it is singular, then ending sound gonna let us know that, okay, this is uh, um, like uh, it is Rafa Nasabarjar. For example, Muslimun, Musliman, and Muslimin. Mm -hmm. And that is the example of uh, any ism being fully flexible. fully flexible. Fully flexible ending sound. Then ending sound, but non-flexible. Musa, Musa, Musa. Ending sound, partly flexible. Yusufu, Yusufa, and Yusufa. So this is the example of partly flexible. Then we know that, okay, there is not only one way to find the status of any ism, there is another way. What is another way? Ending combination. Right? So ending combination, the pair combination, Muslimani, Muslimani, Muslimani. Or ending combination of masculine plural, Muslimuna, Muslimina, Muslimina. Or ending combination of feminine, Muslimat, Muslimatin, and Muslimatin. Right? So Muslimani would be Rafa, Muslimuna would be Rafa, Muslimatun would be Rafa. Right? And yeah. Muslimaini, Muslimaini, Nasabarjar, Muslimina, Muslimina, Nasabarjar, and Muslimatin or Muslimatin, Nasab or Jar. And then independent pronoun, the male Munfazil, right? So 
they are always going to be rafa and then attached pronoun they can be either nasab or jar so subhanallah this chart is very handy for you guys to know the status of any ism so anyone is uh, clear on this chart alhamdulillah mm -hmm. make everybody. sense right that's all alhamdulillah and then inshallah next class we are going to move on a uh, fragment <clears throat> And Jar Mazru fragment we already did. So now we are going to uh, talk about uh, Harfuna sub fragment. This is what we not do so far. So I'm going to ask you to go through from page number 21 to 21 to 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 to. Inshallah, we're going to discuss Idafa fragment as well because we already did it. So, until Idafa. Mm. Until page 28. Okay? okay. So, you have to go through this uh, and these pages. 20. What was the starting one? 21. 21. So 21 to 28. Okay. That's all your homework. Plus do all these. Uh, uh, open up quran -e Park And uh, find all these uh, flexible. Uh, like uh, flexibility. So you need to look. Uh, what word is fully flexible. Partly or non-flexible. That is all for the uh, homework and Alhamdulillah, we are done. So I'm going to end. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafani wa iyaakum bi ayati wa zikr al-Hakim. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. وَنَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَنَتُوبُ إِلَيْكَ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعَيْزَةِ يَمَّا يَسِفُونَ وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ آمين سُبْحَانَ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ